today had to answer to the Senate Judiciary, the director painted a troubling picture. The FBI has a very broad array of responsibilities to address a staggering array of threats that face our country in terrorism, in counterintelligence, and in criminal matters. In San Bernardino, we saw last week a different dimension of the threat, which is the homegrown violent extremists, the radicalizing in place in order to kill innocent people on behalf of a foreign terrorist organization. San Bernardino involved two killers who were radicalized for quite a long time before their attack. As early as the end of 2013, they were talking to each other about jihad and martyrdom before they became engaged and then married and lived together in the United States. We're working very hard to understand exactly their association and the source of their inspiration. We're also working very hard to understand whether there was anybody else involved with assisting them, with supporting them, with equipping them. You pay us to do counterterrorism. We're not perfect. We are good at this. We cannot allow ourselves to be paralyzed by what these people are hoping to achieve. Uh, that's what I hope the American people will take from the, the unsettling experience of watching what goes on uh, in San Bernardino and Paris. Our chief intelligence correspondent, Catherine Herridge, has more from Washington. Catherine? Megan, this is groundbreaking testimony. For the first time, a senior law enforcement officer has publicly confirmed that the couple were radicalized even before they met each other, leading a senior Republican to question whether ISIS or al-Qaeda played matchmaker. Is there any evidence that this uh, marriage was arranged by a terrorist organization or terrorist operative, or was it just a meeting on the Internet? I don't know the answer to that yet. Do you agree with me that if it was arranged by a terrorist operative of organization, that is a game changer? It would be a very, very important thing to know. That's why we're working so well, hard that's... to understand it. On encryption, Director Comey said criminals and terrorists are using this technology in greater numbers and with even more success. On the ISIS-inspired plot in Garland, Texas last May, where two shooters tried to take out a Prophet Muhammad cartoon drawing contest, the FBI director said the suspects went dark, sending 109 messages that remain secret to this day. Our ability to monitor them has not kept pace. In fact, it's going in the wrong direction. So our ability to find people hiding in the United States looking to do bad things, to root out all kinds of organized criminal actors, is steadily being impaired. That's the problem. Also on Capitol Hill, new scrutiny of the K-1 fiancé visa used by Tashfeen Malik to enter the U.S., allegations that the address in Pakistan had been faked, and whether she somehow bypassed the required interview by a State Department officer. Director Comey's testimony leaves no doubt today that the visa screening process, including two rounds of criminal and national security background checks, failed. And though Farouk had been in contact with terrorism suspects the FBI was tracking, it was not enough to open an independent FBI investigation of the 28-year-old. Megan? Catherine, thank you. You're welcome. And while Director Comey seems to be concerned with the government's ability to keep Americans safe, Attorney General Loretta Lynch, who is his boss, seems focused on downplaying any larger threat to the country, telling an audience in London today that, quote, at this point in time, we do not have an indication that these two people were part of a larger cell. James Carlstrom.